need to hear that today. Are you dealing with some kind of, uh, just somebody doing some evil things against you? Somebody did something bad in your family? Somebody somebody did some uh, harm to you or your loved ones and, and caused you so much pain and you want to retaliate and you want to pay them back an eye for an eye and use retaliation Well, and, and, and retribution, but hey, it says here, don't say, I will avenge this evil. Don't do that. It says, don't do that. Wait on the Lord and he will rescue you. Hey, y'all. Welcome back to The Encouraging Word. My name is Michelle. We are on 31 days in the book of Proverbs. So hey, if you guys missed any of the days previous to this, because we are going to be on day number 20, and we got 11 more days to go after this. So I want to give you a chance that if you need to go check out that playlist, because hey guys, it's been so good. God has been meeting us. The Holy Spirit has just been showing up and downloading and depositing so much wisdom into our spirit. We've been able to take away some life applications and to understand um, and gain biblical knowledge and understanding of God's word and what he wants from us, what his character is, all of that good stuff. We've been able to apply that and to just go away feeling like renewed or refreshed in the Lord and and it's been such an encouragement for me just to do it. So I pray that it blesses you. But if you've missed any of the previous days, I'm going to put a link right here where you can go check out that playlist of 31 days of Proverbs. We're doing a chapter a day. So um, make sure I want to give you guys a chance. I know I always do this at the beginning of my video, but please subscribe to my channel. The reason is because that's how the YouTube algorithm works and I would love to spread the gospel and biblical understanding to as many people around the world as I can. And so if you subscribe to my channel, I'm going to put that right here and then you'll get all the notifications of the future uh, videos that I release. And that way you can be encouraged in God's word because that is why it's, I called it the encouraging word is to encourage you through so many different things. Y'all can check out all the playlists. I have over 90 videos, you guys, of various things, various biblical things. Um, so you can find something. Look at my kitty. <laughs> she found a headband or a... Uh, Oh, she's playing with my hair thing. Just ignore her, but it's kind of hard because she's so cute. That's Ginger Rose. Um, but we'll just get started for today. Hopefully she'll stop doing that because she is kind of distracting and she's a cute kitty. Okay, so chapter 20, and we're going to get started with that now. Wine is a mocker. Beer is a brawler. <laughs> Whoever goes astray because of them is not wise. Terrible wrath is like the roaring of a lion. Anyone who provokes him endangers himself. Honor belongs to the person who ends a dispute, but any fool can get himself into a quarrel. So notice how this is just kind of bringing up alcohol for some reason. <laughs> hey, where the shoe fits, you know, listen, all of our convictions from the Lord are different. Everyone's different. I personally don't read the scripture and feel like the Lord is telling us we can never have a drink. Um, I feel like the Lord is telling us when he, uh, through scripture, that we should never get drunk and just be acting crazy. So yeah, that's not a, that's not a good thing. Um, there's even scripture that says that a little red wine is good for our stomachs when our stomachs are, are upset. So it has med medicinal properties and things like that. But this is bringing up you know, wine is a mocker and beer is a brawler. So that this is talking about things that are when you are indulging too much and you are maybe an addict or you are somebody who is just constantly getting drunk and you have taken it from a little enjoyment here and there. I mean, you can even enjoy one glass of wine every day and you're totally fine, you know? So um, the Lord has made that. But you stick to your convictions. If you feel like the Lord has delivered you out of alcoholism or the Lord has 
delivered you um, or he has specifically told you, no, I don't want you to drink, you know, hey, that's a secondary thing. It's not a primary thing when it comes to the gospel. So you listen to the Lord and whatever the Lord convicts you specifically about alcohol, okay? But here it's just interesting how the Lord is showing us through um, the wisdom he's given to Solomon that you know, we need to be careful how we're consuming those things that in which he has made because they'll make us not wise. They'll make us get in trouble. They'll lead us into sin and to temptation. Um, a, a king's terrible wrath is like a roaring of a lion. Anyone who provokes him endangers himself, you know, about not provoking people, especially when they've been drinking or doing something, you know, those type of people. Like, you don't provoke people when they're already like that, right? Honor belongs to the person who ends a dispute, but a fool can get himself into a quarrel. Again, you want to um, be a person that's a, a peacemaker. You want to be a person that diffuses things and um, and, and, and practices uh, with their conduct and their speech uh, godliness, you know? And you want to be the one who puts out flames and fires and 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 start with your own mouth, right? And your own actions, right? And that can help. So the slacker does not plow during season time. At harvest time, he looks and there is nothing. So essentially, don't be a slacker. Don't be lazy. Don't be lazy with the things that God is calling you to do or the time and the treasures and the talents that God has given you, be purposeful. Be purposeful and, and like this is talking about planting and reaping, you know, for harvest. You're not gonna have anything if you're not being busy for the Lord, if you're not doing God's will in your life, if you're not, um, you know, God will convict us and he'll lovingly do that. And if we're on the wrong path or we have our I set on other things that are more worldly, maybe things that are more fleshly that we want, and we have our own goals and our own dreams, but the Lord is like, no, that's not my desire, that's your desire, and that's not, I'm not gonna bless that, you know? So don't be a slacker in the area of the things that God wants you to do. You know, pray that you would be faithful and that you would do those things for the Lord. Pray that um, He'll, he'll uh, renew you renew your strength, give you clarity, give you focus, and help you to get on with what he wants you to plant in your life so that you can reap a harvest for him, you know? Uh, verse five, counsel in a heart, a person's heart is deep water, but a person of understanding draws it out. Counsel in a person's heart is deep water. So you're going to people and, and, and you're getting counsel, you're, you're, having, you're having some issues, you're gonna go seek godly counsel. They're giving you godly counsel and you're putting it in your heart and it's deep spiritual truths that are being applied to your heart through the counseling, okay? And out of that deep spiritual truth, um, a, another person can come or you can later in your life or whenever, you can draw out those spiritual truths, you can draw it out okay and reuse it okay so that's how god works you know isn't that beautiful and it's just out, out of us will flow living waters running living waters and it's the holy spirit and his wisdom and he's the most wise and he only says what the father says and so god is so powerful in might and wisdom and that we need to um it's good to find counseling with other godly people and to and to put ourselves under submission, not only to Christ, make him the Lord and Savior of our life, but if God has put some higher ups in your life, like a pastor or elders or whoever, um, it's good to come and submit yourself underneath them be, and be able to receive constructive criticism from the top down. And then God will also do where he'll place some people underneath you and you'll be their top line and you're going to pour into their life and counsel them. And the whole thing is just, you know, flowing with God's presence and God's wisdom. And, you know, that person is going to reach up from your well. And that person is going to reach down and take some more of the counseling that they one time gave you and reapply it to their life. And so it's just like a cycle, you know. Isn't that beautiful how God is? Okay, verse 6. Many a person proclaims his own loyalty, but who can find a trustworthy person. 
he's like asking that question like who can find a tr trust really who can really honestly find a really truly trustworthy person um, because many people proclaim their own loyalty like many people say that they're trustworthy many people like to act like they are but really at the end of the day they're not you know because their actions and their 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 ways of you know just their behavior and time shows otherwise um, so it is really really uh, a, a rare quality and a gem to find uh, people who are super tr faithful to God and trustworthy to you. So you hold on to those people if you find that because it's hard to find a trustworthy person. And I'm so thankful um, that the Lord gave me my husband because literally he is the most faithful person that I have ever met. Like I look at him and I gleam so much from him and I see so much of the Lord in him because I'm like, wow, you know, like he's so loyal and faithful. And like, if he says he's gonna do something, he does it. Like he never, he never does that where he's like, oh yeah, I'll get this or that, or I'll do that for you. And then he doesn't carry it out or carry it through. And I really admire that about him. I really respect him. Um, the Lord has given him a lot of favor, like in, the, in his job, in the business realm, and even within, you know the church and things like that um he's you know people just know him by his character and he's so loyal and it's hard to find people like that especially now today's day and age so if you do find somebody like that you want to hold on to them whether they're your spouse or they're a friend or anyone in your life that god would use to be a loyal person in your life and and that's just a beautiful thing um, a righteous person acts with integrity and his children who come after him will be happy. And I tell my kids all the time, uh, be, being righteous is acting right in the eyes of God and being in, having integrity is doing the right thing when no one is watching you. Like you're doing the right thing when people watch you, but what are you doing when, you're, when they're not watching you? <laughs> and to remember the eyes of the Lord are on you all times. Just because human beings are not watching you does not mean the Lord is not with you in your dark places and in your secret times and your your thing when you think no one is there, God is there. So, um, yeah, so a person who acts with righteousness and integrity, his children who come after him will be happy. Because, you know, I look, like I said up about my husband, he's so faithful and he has a lot of like godly character in him that he has. And it's such a good fruit for my kids to see and for my boys to to see that in their father and to know how to become a good godly man as they grow, how to become a good godly boy, how to how to have these, hey, like practice these virtues in your life, like practice being honest, practice integrity, practice being a faithful person. If you say you're going to do something, carry it through so that people will build a character with you and they'll know like so that the Lord can be your defender that later on if someone tries to slander you or take something from you or say something against you um, that people will stand up for you because they'll know your character by then and they'll know that you're an integrous person and that you're righteous in your behavior and your actions and your speech and so it's such a good thing for our kids to see that so that's, that's something super beautiful to me verse 8 a king sits on a throne to judge a king sitting on a throne to judge separates out all evil with his eyes. Mm -hmm. And that is just a picture of God sitting on his throne, looking down at us, separating all evil that he sees, you know, with his eyes. Who can say, I have kept my heart pure. I am cleansed from my sin. Who can say that? Only believers can say that now. You know, this is written by Solomon before Christ. But Honestly, who can say I have kept my heart pure and, and, and I am cleansed from my sin? Like no one can say that truly because we all, as you know, we all have moments where we fall and we fail and we fall into sin or we, we make a mistake. And I constantly try to like go before the Lord and just the other day I'm like, Lord, please search me. Like David said, oh, search my heart, oh Lord. And if you find it anything impure and unholy and Anything that is not of you, God, just reveal it to me so that I can repent and I can ask you to take it from me because I don't want it, you know? So that is like super important to, to do that every now and then. And okay, so differing weights and varying measures 
both are detestable to the Lord, meaning differing weights and, di and varying measures, like not being righteous in your judgment and, and carrying out an unjust thing uh, and being, uh, you know, like being sneaky and don't doing things the right way. And um, that's a detestable to the Lord when you're not being fair, basically, like measuring, weighting, you're not being fair, thinking of the scales of justice. There's not, there needs to be a fair fairness across the board and if you're practicing unfairness the Lord is not happy with that all right let's see here verse 11 even a young man is known by his actions but whether his behavior uh what by whether his behavior is pure and upright so here God is telling us that even a young man a young person is known by their actions so like that's true for a mom and a dad because if we see other kids in the neighborhood or at school and our we hear stories or we see things happening and then we'll tell our kids like hey I don't want you hanging out with that person you know because you're known by your behavior and you'll you'll be known whether you're a pure and upright person or if you're going to lead people astray because you're you're you are already astray and you're not wanting to walk with the Lord so that's a good thing for any young person that even a young man is known by his young act by his actions even a young person by whether his behavior is pure and upright so behavior shows everything right the hearing ear and the seeing eye the lord made them both don't love sleep or you will become poor open your eyes and you and you'll have enough to eat in other words go get a job bro <laughs> Go get a job. Do something with your talents God gave you. Go work hard and do provide for yourself and your family. God doesn't like laziness. All right, verse 14. It's worthless. It's worthless, the buyer says. But after he is on his way, he gloats. There is gold and a multitude of jewels, but, no, but knowledgeable lips are a rare treasure. So knowledgeable lips are a rare treasure someone who can feed knowledge especially biblical spiritual knowledge into other people's lives and encourage them in the lord those are more valuable than gold and and jewels verse 16 take this garment for he has put up security for a stranger get collateral collateral if it is for foreigners Food gained by fraud is sweet to a person, but afterward his mouth is full of gravel. <laughs> I love that. Food gained by fraud. So in other words, it's sweet when you like, oh, the devil is going to tempt you and he's going to want you to like steal. He's going to want you to, you know, you know he's going to tempt you in areas that you're just, you have a propensity to sin in and he's going to, he's going to make it super sweet. So you're like, hmm. I'm so tempted. I want to, oh, you know, like how it, it's hard to like resist, you know, because it's so sweet to a person. But afterwards, your mouth is full of gravel. Mm -hmm. Afterwards, your sin is stinky. Your sin is stinky and don't fall for the lies of Satan and his tricks. Okay. Stay pure before the Lord. Keep his commandments, you guys. Okay. Uh, verse 18, finalize plans with counsel and wage war with sound guidance. In other words, get godly counsel and wage war with God, with sound guidance. Like go against the enemy, go wage war against the enemy or against injustice or you know righteous things, but do it with counsel and do it with godly counsel and prayer and all that kind of stuff. Verse 19, the one who reveals secrets is a constant gossip. Yep. Avoid someone with a big mouth. <laughs> Avoid someone with a big mouth. Y'all know any big mouth people? Mm -hmm. I bet you, you could tell me some people in the comments that are big mouth people, but then you you yourself would be being a big mouth person, right? <laughs> By calling them out, but hey. So just be careful with gossip in your own life. You know, be a good example to the Lord um, because you represent the Lord and you, you don't want to be a, a big mouth, right? Um, Verse 20, whoever curses his father or mother, his lamp will go out in dark and deep darkness. An inheritance gained prematurely will not be blessed ultimately. And that just reminds me of the prodigal son. Do you guys know about that? Um, that, uh, it's, oh gosh, 
not a proverb, a parable, the parable of the prodigal son, where Jesus told a story about the boy getting an inheritance and he asked his father for it early and his father gave it to him and he went off to a foreign land and he did all kinds of uh, sinful behaviors and got involved with prostitution, prostitutes and all kinds of stuff and soon enough his money was all away and and he found himself in a pigsty and you know which is really bad because this you know this is of a Jewish in a Jewish uh, story here of a Jew and you know Jewish people are not supposed that was an unclean animal and then you're finding yourself an unclean animal pigsty which you know if you're a Jew you're not supposed to be even being around pigs because they were considered unclean you know um, so then he comes and he's looking around and he realizes, oh my God, this is where, why am I here? This is not where I belong, but I'm here because of my own behavior. And then he decides, well, it's better for me to go back and, and, and go back to my father and be like a servant, a slave to him. And it's better than this life. And then he goes back and then yet the father sees from afar, his son coming back and he throws a party for him and he welcomes his son home and this is just this beautiful picture of how god is with every sinner and that when we come and we run back to god and we repent and we want to be we want come into his kingdom and how god puts a ring on our finger and puts a, a nice um, coat on us and that we're like welcomed into the family you know so that just reminds me of an inheritance gained prematurely will not be blessed ultimately so hey he took away his father's inheritance and went away and it was a premature thing and it reaped him nothing but heartache and loss and grief and so that's so true don't say i will avenge this evil wait on the lord and he will rescue you Ooh, we who, do, who needs to hear that today are you dealing with some kind of uh just somebody doing some evil things against you somebody did something bad in your family somebody somebody did some uh, harm to you or your loved ones and and caused you so much pain and you want to retaliate and you want to pay them back an eye for an eye and use retaliation well and and, and retribution but hey it says here don't say i will avenge this evil don't do that it says don't do that wait on the lord and he will rescue you and that's because um, that fighting is of the Lord's. That The Lord is going to fight that battle for you. Some battles are of God. And we have to know that when we have hardships and we go through stuff, that, God, that although God is allowing it to happen because He is sovereign in our lives, that He's using it to embedder us in some kind of capacity and to teach us. Maybe He's using it to break us to begin with because He wants us to come to Him and submit more to Him and make Him more Lord over our lives. But He wants, and He will rescue us out of that, but He doesn't want us to repay evil with evil. He doesn't want us to do that. So He wants us to wait on the Lord and, and His rescuing, and He will pay back those people for what they've done. The evil that has been done, He'll pay it back. Verse 23, Deferring weights are detestable to the Lord, and dishonest scales are unfair. So just about unfairness here. Even a courageous person's lips are determined by the Lord. So how can anyone understand his own way? It is a trap for anyone to uh, dedicate something rashly. De yeah, dedicate. It is a trap for anyone to dedicate something rashly and later to reconsider his vows. So like, don't say that you're gonna do something, don't promise something, don't give yourself over to something, and then later you you wanna take it back, you wanna reconsider it, it was not a good thing for you. You took a vow on something you shouldn't have, it was a bad decision, so be careful. A wise king separates out the wicked and drives a threshing wheel over them. The Lord's lamp sheds light on a person's life, searching the innermost parts. And that's true. The Lord's lamp sheds light on a person's life. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord shines things on us and, and he wants to uncover things. It's not that he's shining it because he needs to see it because he doesn't know. He's shining it and illuminating it in our life, like our sin, so that we can 
repent and, and, and be sorry and be ashamed of that and, and, and come to the Lord with a repentant heart and get right with him. And he searches our innermost parts. Wow. He searches our, our innermost parts of our being, of our spirit and soul, and he knows all things. And so just, you know, run to the Lord and just confess your sins to him and let him regenerate you. Even if you've been walking the, for the Lord for a while and you've stumbled and you think that, you know, the Lord doesn't know or you think that he's overlooking it or forgiving it because maybe you still have his favor to a certain degree and you're not really feeling the heat yet. But the Lord is so patient and kind and merciful. He's giving you a chance. He's giving you a chance to come and repent and to confess your sins to one another so that he may heal you, right? Loyalty and faithfulness guard a king. Through loyalty, he maintains a throne. Verse 29, the glory of young men is their strength and the splendor of old men is their gray hair. I love that. So young men are so, so glorify themselves with how strong they are. I, I know my 15 year old right now is working out and he's, oh, feel this muscle mom and I'm just growing and he's in jiu-jitsu and he's learning all these new moves and it's just it's really cute to see him like kind of come into his own boyness you know teenagerhood and and you know that's just normal to want to do those things and become strong and they glory in that but an old man glories in the splendor of his gray hair which is just a symbolic for the wisdom that he's collected for himself over the years. So that's just a beautiful picture. All right, last verse, verse 30. Lashes and wounds purge away evil, and beatings cleanse the innermost parts. Wow. Lashes and wounds purge away evil, and beatings cleanse the innermost parts. That's heavy, y'all. That's heavy. Okay, you guys, that's it for today. That was chapter 20. I, I pray that you heard something from the Lord. I hope that you in some capacity was encouraged today. I hope that you'll join me for day 21 tomorrow. Hey, you guys, be blessed in the Lord. I love you so much. I'm your biggest fan. I'm so thankful and grateful for to you for all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe now so that you get all my um my notifications okay love you so much y'all have a blessed day in the lord bye-bye for today